Pentecost Sunday, the day that we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. Just last Sunday, we celebrated Jesus' ascension when he returned to God the Father from whence he had come in the beginning, as in, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Before ascending, Jesus blessed the disciples. He commissioned them to be his witnesses, and he promised them that not too many days from now, you will be clothed with power from on high. And until then, they were to wait in Jerusalem. And that's where they were 10 days later on that Jewish festival of Pentecost. It was a big deal, this festival, connected uh, both with a harvest type of festival as well as with Moses. And when Moses was on Mount Sinai receiving the covenant with God, the Ten Commandments, well, there were lots of people in Jerusalem for this festival. People had made their pilgrimages from all over the known world. They were all gathered in one place at one time for these festivities. Well, somewhat separate from this group of people, this melting pot of people, were Jesus' disciples. They were in a room, maybe hiding as they were trying to figure out how to do this Jesus movement without Jesus. When all of a sudden, there was a sound like a mighty whoosh, as something like wind swept through the room. And there was fire, something like tongues of fire appearing above the disciples' heads. And stranger yet, it gets stranger. When they ran outside, they discovered that they were speaking in other languages, languages that they had not previously known. They were speaking about Jesus in these other languages in ways that all of these pilgrims from all around the known world could hear and understand. It was amazing, miraculous, strange. The Holy Spirit had come. The Holy Spirit has come, and the Holy Spirit continues to come. But what for? And why? To what end? First and probably most importantly, the Holy Spirit comes for the sake of others. And secondly, for the sake of me, for the sake of you, for the sake of us. First, for the sake of others. The Holy Spirit came so that others could hear about and then experience the love and grace of Jesus Christ. So that they could come to faith in Jesus and, and all that that entails, the abundant life that comes, the meaningful life that comes when we live in a relationship with Jesus. And that happened, right? Right? That happened as the Spirit gave those disciples the ability and the courage, <laughs> the boldness to speak about Jesus in ways that others could understand. You see, the previously scared and hiding disciples became courageous proclaimers. The hesitant and, and doubt-filled ones became bold and assured. The Aramaic-speaking ones began speaking and being understood in all sorts of languages. What happened here is barriers were overcome and walls separating peoples were torn down. I'm wondering this morning if we, if you and I are open to the Spirit's presence and empowerment to help us speak in new ways, in ways that people in our community can understand so that more and more people can hear about and learn about and experience the love and grace of God. And I say it that way because I believe that the Spirit continues to blow and lead and guide and empower, but are we open to that? Or might we be hiding behind closed doors? Might we be hiding behind the walls of our church building? What barriers need to come down? For example, I, I just Googled this up quick. The average age of an American 
is 38.1 years old. The average age of a member of the ELCA, our denomination, 56 years old. Now that suggests to me that you and I need to learn to speak in a way that younger people can understand and therefore be drawn to Jesus. And of course, there are all sorts of other socioeconomic racial barriers that need to come down. But are we open? Are we open to being empowered by the Spirit of God to tear down walls and to build people up? Are we willing to take a risk? A risk to make a difference in Jesus' name in the lives of people all around us. Come, O oh Holy Spirit, come. The Holy Spirit comes for the sake of others. The Holy Spirit comes for the sake of you and me for us. And does two things. One, the Spirit comes to grow us in our Christ likeness. The Holy Spirit comes to make us fruity. Fruity. And what I'm talking about is the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit that we read about, that we hear about in Paul's letter to the Galatians. We read there that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. These are the attributes, the characteristics, if you will, that the Spirit grows in us. And then I look at myself, and you know, I'm good. I excel in all of those areas except maybe one. No, I'm kidding. I have a lot of growth to do, to experience in all nine of those areas. But like fruit... This fruit of the Spirit takes time to grow and mature. That takes time. That takes time, and I need to realize in my life, and maybe you do in yours too, that there's room in your life for the Spirit's work. You might be familiar with the illustration that uses a jar. Think of a, a I don't know if they're a gallon, but a big pickle jar, and you fill it up with marbles or with rocks till it's full. Yeah, it looks full. But then you pour in sand, and quite a bit of sand actually, and it sifts down and through and fills the gaps in between the marbles or the rocks till it looks full. Yeah, it's really full. And then you take a pitcher of water and you pour that in, and that fits also until it gets full. It looks really full, right? I used to use that, or I usually use that as a uh, an illustration of time management. Put the important stuff in first, like those big rocks. Because if you fill your life with all the little stuff, let's say water, if you fill your life to the top with water, and then try to put, there, there's no room for the important stuff. But what I want you to hear today, what I want you to think about today is in this pickle jar illustration, is that there is always more room. There is more room for the Spirit to work and to be present in your life and therefore to make you more fruity, right? So the Holy Spirit comes to grow us in our Christ-likeness. The Spirit also comes to guide us, to come alongside of us. Jesus called the Holy Spirit an advocate, a guide, a comforter, a counselor. In Greek, it's literally paraclete. One who comes alongside. So I have a question for you today. Do you need someone? Could you use someone? Would it be beneficial in your life to have someone like the Holy Spirit to come alongside of you, to be your advocate, your guide, your counselor, your comforter? What a difference someone coming alongside can make. I saw a clip on Facebook of this season of the TV talent show, America's Got Talent. And maybe you've seen this one too. The contestant is a young man. I think he was 20 years old. His name is Cody. He walks in with a white cane indicating he's blind. 
His mother is walking in with him because he, is, he has autism, severe autism. Well, mom walks in alongside of him. Mom answers questions for him, but also encourages him to answer the questions that he's able to answer, but he's not real communicative. After talking with the judges and telling part of her son's story, mom walks over with Cody to the piano. Cody sits down. Mom, I think her name's Tina. Uh, Mom uh, leans over. And she encourages him by saying, this is your time. And he starts playing the piano. He starts singing. And he is amazing. He is so good. He gets done. Mom helps him back to the front and center of the stage. Simon Cowell, not one of the nicest people in the world, one of the judges says, what happened was extraordinary. You obviously have an amazing relationship, the two of you. And it's that relationship that I want to lift up and the role of Cody's mom. She was with her son all of the way, fanning the flames of his musical gifts, encouraging him, walking on the stage with Cody, standing by him, building him up, cheering him on, coming alongside, guiding him off the stage. Do you ever feel that you need something like that? That's what the Holy Spirit is for you. That's what the Holy Spirit does for you. When it feels like we're walking blindly through life, the Holy Spirit comes alongside of us to guide us. When we, feel, when we feel like we're not capable of doing all that we have to do, the Holy Spirit encourages us. When we need support, the Holy Spirit carries us. And that happens especially when, like Simon noted of Cody and his mother, you have an amazing relationship, the two of you. You and the Holy Spirit. Come, oh Holy Spirit, come. The Spirit, which came upon the disciples at Pentecost, continues to come to you and alongside of you. The Holy Spirit comes in the promptings or nudgings, if you will, in your heart. Or when those promptings or nudgings aren't so subtle, we can call it the shove of the dove. (laughs) The Holy Spirit comes to you in carrying conversations. The Holy Spirit comes to you whenever we celebrate the Eucharist. Whenever the Word is read and proclaimed, Holy Spirit comes to you in worship, in singing, and as we pray. And when we experience the Holy Spirit coming alongside of us, and as the Spirit does its work of making us more fruity, as the Spirit grows within each of us, that fruit of the Spirit, it all comes full circle, doesn't it? It comes full circle because then you and I are in a better position to come alongside of others to be the very presence of the Spirit of Jesus for others. The Spirit of Jesus is with us, is for us, and is for others through us. The Holy Spirit gifted and ignited the people of the first century and can in this century as well. Come, O Holy Spirit, come.